Hi, welcome to Programming with Mesh. In this session, we want to manage the state using Redux and use it globally in the app. And we do this using hooks in the simplest way possible, just to get acquainted with the structure of Redux. In the previous session, we learned how to work with the SQLite database and use it to store user information. In this session, we want to use Redux as a state management. First, I change the login page with the Redux logo and name. Now let's take a brief look at how Redux works. Redux is a predictable state container for JavaScript apps. As the application grows, it becomes difficult to keep it organized and maintain data flow. Redux solves this problem by managing application's state with a single global object called store. Redux fundamental principles help in maintaining consistency throughout your application, which makes debugging and testing easier. The Redux architecture is based on the following components. Actions. Actions are plain JavaScript object that contains information. Actions are the only source of information for the store and have a type field that tells what kind of action to perform. Reducers. Actions only tell what to do, but they don't tell how to do. So reducers are the pure functions that take the current state and action and return the new state and tell the store how to do. Store. The store is the object which holds the state of the application. Well, to get us started, we need to install a few modules. First, we install the Redux module. Then, we install the React Redux module. Finally, we install the Redux Tank module as a middleware for Redux. Now to create a Redux files, we create a new folder called Redux. And inside it, we create the first file called Actions. We have already created a state within each component for use within the same component. Now we create these two states using Redux and use it in all components globally. Of course, keep in mind that states are stored temporarily and will be deleted when the app closes. In the actions file, I define two const values to display the type of actions we want to create. Now I create the first action to save the name. Inside this patch, we consider an object that contains the action type and the value that we pass to the action, which is the name here. Now I repeat the same action again and change it to save age. Now in the Redux folder, we create the second file, Reducers. First, we import the const values that we defined in the action into this file, so that we can identify the type of actions. Then we define the default values of the state. Now we create a function that according to the action call, performs the operation we want to perform on the states. At the input of this function, we put a state and action. In fact, whenever any of these actions are called, they are placed inside this function. Now inside the function, according to the type of action called, which we recognize using constants, we change the desired state. For example, for the name, we first hold the current state object, and then fill the state name with a new value that comes from the action side. 
and we do the same for state age. Finally, by default, we return the state without manipulation. Now export this function to call it out of this file. Create the last file in the Redux folder named Store. Inside the Redux module, we import three functions, create store, combine reducers, and apply middleware. Then we import tang as a middleware. We also import the reducer function we created here. Now we create a constant called root reducer to combine all the created reducers in one place. We created one function in the reducer, and if you have several functions in the future, add them as well. Now create the store using root reducer and tongue as middleware. Actually, middleware extends the store's abilities and lets you write async logic that interacts with the store. Tongs are the recommended middleware for basic Redux side effects logic, including complex synchronous logic that needs access to the store and simple async logic like Ajax requests. Now to use this structure, first go to the main file app.js and import the provider component into this file from the React Redux module. We also import the store we created. Now we put the main body of the app inside the provider component. And we set the store in it. In the login component, we import two values of the React Redux module. Use selector and use dispatch. We also import the two actions we created. Now we use the two states that we defined in the reducers file here using use selector. In fact, we can use these states instead of previous states. We can also use use dispatch to call actions. For example, here in the set data function, when I store input values in a database, I also store them in the state. In the dispatch, I enter the action along with the name value. and do the same for the age. In this case, the new value is stored inside the state. We can also do this in the unchanged text function. Now we do the same in the home component and use the states we created with Redux instead of the states within the component. Now I run the app to see the result. As you can see, the state saved on the login page is displayed on the home page. As I said, estates are deleted when the app closes. 
But here, after opening the app, we set the states in the set data function from the values stored in the database. So if I update the name and refresh the app, the states should be resized and displayed on the home page. Well, there must have been a problem saving the states. Yes, the values read from the database are not stored in the state here. I modified them and refreshed the app. As you can see after the refresh, the states were properly set and displayed. Well, now suppose we want to do another operation on the states. For example, have a button that increases the number of age. To do this, we create a new action in the actions file. We do this similar to the previous actions and consider its input as the same age. Now we use this action in the reducers file. In the return section we can use the value we passed to the action or here we can use the previous value of age in the state. And for example, I add one year to it. Now I use this action on the home page to increase age. To do this, I create a new button. And I specify that when you press it, the increase age action is called. You should not define anything as input for it, because we didn't use the action value in the reducer function. As you can see, the button works properly and increases the age by one year. So if we want to do a brief review to create a Redux structure, we need the actions file to define the operation on the states. We need the reducers file to perform operations on the states according to the called action. And we need the store file to have a central storage, which we assign to the provider component in the add.js file. Finally, by using hooks in React Redux, we can use or change the values of the states. So there we go, we learned how to use Redux to manage a state in the app. So in the next video, we will talk about fetching data using an API. Now if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next session.